Agoracom Talks, your weekly go-to source for the best small cap headlines for over 65 million investors since 2007. We've got some breaking news hitting the wires today, folks. Really significant headlines across the small cap market. We're seeing potential shifts in advanced materials, uh, some really interesting finds in critical minerals, big revenue numbers for environmental remediation. And, and clean industrial tech and biopharma too. It's a busy landscape. Absolutely. So our mission here is to cut through the noise, zero in on the really critical info from these latest press releases. We want to give you the hard data, the key results, the stuff that might actually you know, signal an opportunity worth digging into deeper. Exactly. We'll focus on those concrete numbers, those operational milestones that can make investors take notice. Let's jump in. All right. First up, HPQ Silicon. That's TSXV, ticker HPQ. The headline just hit. Pyrogenesis and HPQ Silicon hit breakthrough milestone in fume silica production. Sounds pretty big, right? Yeah. They're talking about potentially reshaping the global market for these high-value industrial materials. What's the core news here? Well, the big thing is they've successfully produced and, importantly, recovered fume silica at scale. And they used HPQ Silica Pulver's own process to do it. You know, fume silica, that's a multi-billion dollar market. Yeah. Traditionally, making it is complex, uses a ton of energy. Right, and not great for emissions either, I gather. Exactly. Yeah. So HPQ's approach is aiming to be greener, more sustainable, maybe even cheaper. And Pyrogenesis, their partner, seems pretty confident. They're quoted saying this is uh, probably one of the most, if not the most, important milestones. Yeah. The remaining balance of challenges should be very manageable. That's a strong statement from a partner like Pyrogenesis. It suggests they really think they've cracked a major part of the puzzle. Okay, and the release mentions the powder they recovered is visually consistent with fume silica. That's step one, I guess. It's a good first sign, definitely. But the key is what comes next. Bernard Turillon, HPQ's CEO, said something about that. Achieving these outcomes so early significantly boosts our confidence. Right, and he followed up saying, once we receive confirmation and are satisfied with the material's quality, we will be ready to distribute samples to third parties. So the tangible result everyone's waiting for is that confirmation, the lab tests. Precisely. They need rigorous testing now to prove definitively, yes, this is high quality fume silica, no impurities, if they get that confirmation. Then they can start sending it out, potentially lock up some deals. That's the idea. Validation opens the door to licensing, supply agreements, you name it. Especially with companies looking for those greener, potentially lower cost materials. So watch for news on that testing and any sample distribution. Got it. Okay, let's move on to Ren4 Resources. CSE ticker, RFR headline. Renforth Resources leverages innovative bark sampling to unlock critical mineral potential in Quebec. Innovative bark sampling. Sounds interesting. What exactly are they doing? It's actually a pretty clever low-impact approach. They're looking at their Victoria property in Quebec, part of the Millardic Metals package. Essentially, trees and other vegetation naturally absorb metals from the soil and groundwater by analyzing bark samples. You can get clues about what minerals might be hidden underground. Exactly. It's especially useful in areas like the Abitibi Greenstone Belt, where you don't always have a lot of rocks sticking out of the surface to sample directly. And they found something promising. Seems like it. The results showed traces of nickel, cobalt, platinum, palladium. Those are key critical minerals in bark from areas with ultramatic rocks. And they also found zinc, copper, silver, gold traces in bark from zones associated with VMS style mineralization, which is another type known for hosting valuable metals. So finding those specific critical metals, even in trace amounts in bark, is significant. It is, yeah. Because it helps them zero in on where to focus more intensive exploration, like drilling, without having to disturb large areas randomly. It's cheaper, less impactful, and potentially more precise. And it seems like these results were compelling enough for them to shift focus. The release mentions delaying work elsewhere. Right, they actually said, receiving this data and confirming the effectiveness of the technique has resulted in a delay to our work at Nixon Bartleman. Our immediate focus will return to the Millardic Metals package. That definitely signals confidence in what they're seeing at Victoria. It does. It suggests they believe these bark anomalies point towards something potentially substantial below ground. For investors, the next step is seeing if follow-up work, like ground geophysics or drilling, confirms actual mineralized bodies. Okay, switching gears now to the environmental side. Zephyromethane, trading on CBOE Canada, ticker ZEFI. Headline. Zephyromethane reports $6.9 million in quarterly revenue as it expands environmental remediation across U.S. energy states. 
That $6.9 million jumps out. What's driving that revenue? Zephyro's business is basically cleaning up environmental liabilities. They plug old, abandoned oil and gas wells, which often leak methane, a really potent greenhouse gas. So they stop the leaks, capture the methane, and then they generate carbon offsets from that captured methane. And that $6.9 million is for their third fiscal quarter of 2025. That's right. And a big part of the story is their expansion. They were already in Ohio and Pennsylvania, but now they're moving into Texas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, big energy states. Makes sense. And they have a new contract helping drive that. Yes, a deal with Pompano Resource Transformation to decommission wells across the Southwest. That's clearly boosting their activity level. And the carbon offset side, how does that turn to money? So by capturing that methane, they get it verified through groups like the American Carbon Registry and to Sud America. That verification turns the captured methane into certified carbon credits. Which companies then buy to meet their own climate goals? Exactly. Lots of corporations need these credits to hit carbon neutral targets. Zafira reported a gross profit of a million dollars, up almost 74% from the previous quarter. Their year-to-date revenue is $24.4 million, up 5% year over year. So the model seems to be working financially. They also mentioned AI. Yeah, they're using AI apparently to get better at predicting methane leaks and optimizing the capture process, aiming to boost efficiency and cut costs. There was also a note about a failure to pay notice. There was, related to a $2 million promissory note from an acquisition. But the company stated it's within you know standard grace periods and isn't stopping them from operating financially. Something to keep an eye on, but they framed it as manageable. Okay, so Zafiro is positioned in that growing environmental remediation and carbon market space. Definitely aligns with those sustainable investing trends. All right, let's talk about Pyrogenesis again. Ticker PYR on the TSX headline. Pyrogenesis posts Q1 2025 results, citing strong backlog and expansion across energy transition markets. Now, they reported Q1 revenue of $3 million, which was actually down year over year, but they're highlighting the backlog. That's the key message they're pushing, yes. Yeah. The $3 million revenue was down 14% compared to Q1 last year, mm. but this is the crucial number, they have a $52 million revenue backlog, yeah. and significantly 88% of that backlog is in US dollars, which is generally favorable. Right, and the CEO, P. Peter Pascali, addressed the revenue dip directly, didn't he? He did, he basically yeah. said, look, their revenue is based on percentage of completion for big projects. So quarter to quarter numbers could be lumpy, unpredictable. He said, my confidence is in no way dimmed with these Q1 results, essentially framing it as normal business patterns. So the $52 million backlog is the indicator of future business. Where is that work coming from? It's spread across their main areas. Titanium and silica powder production, connecting back to HPQ potentially, um, aluminum dross processing systems, and their plasma burners for things like cements and steel furnaces. All areas focused on cleaner, more efficient industrial processes. Exactly, it fits right into that energy transition theme. They also noted an improved gross margin, up to 27%, and smaller net and adjusted EBITDA losses compared to last year. And they're still focused on cutting costs. Yeah, they're targeting another three to $5 million in recurring savings this year. So the focus for investors is seeing them convert that big backlog into recognized revenue and continue improving those margins and losses. Okay, makes sense. Finally, let's look at Quantum Biopharma, CSE, ticker QNTM, headline. Quantum Biopharma reaches key milestone in advancing first-in-class MS treatment. Biotech News, focusing on multiple sclerosis. What's the specific milestone here? The big step forward is that they've completed dosing in their 90-day oral toxicity studies for their main drug candidate, Lucid21302, or Lucid MS. And why are those toxicity studies so important? They're absolutely critical. These preclinical studies provide the essential safety data you need before you can even ask regulators like the FDA for permission to test the drug in humans. Quantum's goal is to file what's called an Investigational New Drug Application, or IND, with the FDA before the end of 2025. Completing these talk studies is a huge step towards that filing. And they're calling Lucid MS a first-in-class treatment. What does that mean in practical terms? First-in-class means it works through a novel mechanism, different way of targeting the disease compared to existing MS drugs. Mm. If successful, it could offer a new treatment option, potentially with different benefits or for different patient groups. So completing these safety studies significantly de-risks the project. It does, yes. It clears a major preclinical hurdle. The CEO, Zishan Saeed, said, we are excited about the potential. By completing these toxicity studies, we are 
now closer to initiating a phase two trial in people with MS. Phase two is human testing for efficacy, right? Right, after the IND is hopefully approved by the FDA. Getting to phase two is a major value inflection point for a biotech company. It often attracts more funding, potential partners, even buyout interest if the early data looks good. So the next steps are analyzing this TOX data, putting together the IND package for the FDA. Exactly. And then hoping for FDA clearance to start those phase two trials, maybe even before year end. That's the timeline they seem to be aiming for. Okay, quite a milestone for quantum. So let's recap quickly. We hit HPQ Silicon, HPQ and their fumed silica production progress with pyrogenesis, QIR. We looked at Runforth Resources RFR using bark sampling for critical minerals, zephyromethane, ZEFI, with strong revenue in well plugging and carbon offsets. Pyrogenesis, PYR, highlighting its massive backlog despite a slower Q1 revenue number, and Quantum Biopharma, QNTM, completing key safety studies for its potential MS drug. Right. Now remember, we've just scratched the surface here, hitting the main headlines and the key data points. If any of these stories caught your interest, HPQ, RFR, ZEFI, PYR, QNTM, the next step is yours. You really need to do your own deeper research, your own due diligence. That's always crucial. Absolutely. And maybe think about this as you do that research. Yeah. You've got advanced materials, critical minerals, environmental cleanup, clean industrial tech, biotech breakthroughs. Which of these sectors feels like it holds the most compelling opportunity for you in today's market? And what specific proof points, what data are you going to look for to convince yourself that potential is real? That's the starting point for your own deep dive.